I had my boobs done in London. Now I'm really worried they took my kidney too. No, you'd know. It's fine. My sister got hers done in Essex. You're going to see me. I'm going to get a whole body scan gifted from some random (laughs) clinic. Being like, just checking, I've still got my kidneys. Welcome back to another episode of Girls Know Nothing. Today's guest is actually the youngest guest that we've ever had in our studio. And she started her social media career at the age of just nine years old. Being an influencer while in full-time education, if anyone remembers how hard it was being a teenager growing up, you have to remember that this guest, Amy, did that while all in the public eye. I actually learned a mind-blowing amount while researching this episode. So I'm really excited to welcome Amy to the studio. I actually, when I was researching your episode, I was talking to Cherry. And I actually learned so much, so many things I didn't know were even a thing. Okay. Um, you started your social media journey at nine. Yeah, I was the baby of everything. Uh, that blows my mind because at nine, I think my phone had the capability to play Snake and that's it. Yeah, no, I always just like used to beg my sisters like, please one more hour. And I'd use theirs and then I ended up obviously getting my own when I was a bit older. But they used to take all the pictures and manage my account and they still do really. So how did you decide that you wanted to do social media? Nine's so young to decide to do anything. I didn't really decide. I just done it for fun. Like I didn't, even now I'm like, yeah, okay, it's a job. But like, it still doesn't feel like a job to me. But when I first began, it was because my sister was doing blogging. Okay. And she used to get me involved with hers and be like, River Island has sent me this. You get the like matching version for a kid and then we can like match. Oh, that's cute. So it was with her. And then I was like, oh, this is so cool. And I remember once she got like, sent to London to do some like Nickelodeon thing and she come back with like a headband and I was like oh my god I want to do this when I'm older I want Nickelodeon to give to me (laughs) so then from that day it kind of all kicked off from there and I was like do you know what I really think this is like something I'd love to and also at that age I feel like everyone was doing like slime videos like that was my era I feel like you I'm trying You're to like my sister's about... age, so you probably wouldn't have like been in that era. Oh, I didn't do the slime YouTube videos. wasn't really around when my sisters were younger. It's only when my middle, who's 22 now, when she started kind of like growing up 16, 17, that's when YouTube really was like kicking off. I think the only people that did social media when I was younger was like KSI. Yeah. And he, he was, was like, doing FIFA videos back in the day. Yeah, like he was he was cool. But I was always more like the slime, the kids. Like there was this girl called Ruby Ruby who I used to like religiously watch because she'd go in Claire's at like 3 a.m. It was it was so random. But like them <laughs> kind of videos was like my childhood. So then when I started doing it myself, I was just like, this is so weird. But like I've always filmed videos in my bedroom. My sister would get a camera and I'd be like, can I use it and go film a video? And then I'd go on my laptop, get up iMovie, edit them for myself. That's really intense for someone really young to do because I don't even know how to use iMovie and I'm almost 28. iMovies, no, that's the basic. There's more harder ones now, but I have to try and learn and it's so confusing. I'm like, Georgia, my sister's like, you got to do this and that. And I'm like, you just come home and do it when you're home. Like, so you mentioned that your family kind of run your social media yeah what is the dis- what was the decision behind that? I just think I was so young like there's some things you just shouldn't really see at a young age and I feel like they always wanted to protect me because obviously it was something I loved doing and when I got to like the age of 12 that's when it really took off in lockdown and I was like growing massively from it but I just feel like they didn't want me to see things that necessarily like isn't right for me and stuff like that so they had complete control like they delete messages if they was horrible so for me like I didn't really know I was getting hate because they delete them all so I wouldn't be able to see it but which I personally think really helped me because I feel like if I'd seen that I probably wouldn't want to have kept going but it's like but I guess when I was a teenager and I had social media, if my parents said, we're going to run your socials for you so you don't see certain things, I feel like my privacy had been invaded. To be honest, I always had like private accounts. So they was like my friends. Oh, okay. So like they, if I was public on an account, they'd have to take over, which I was just like, yeah, sure. But I'd still have like my Snapchat was just for me. My Instagram, I had a private Instagram growing up, which was like where I post school uniform and things like that. Like oh, yeah, with my okay. friends, I didn't want people to see. So they always let me have that privacy. Like they wouldn't, take it away but I kind of just said like if I want to do social media this young on a public account with random people following me I've got to kind of give it to them do you know what I mean yeah I guess it's really good in a way as well because when you're young you kind of just you overshare because you don't think of like the long-term consequences definitely and things like my house like if it wasn't for my sisters being like you're not posting that because you can see the whole house in that like god knows what would have happened do you know what I mean like the privacy of being on social media like people don't understand how like detrimental it is like anyone can find your house it's so easy yeah because i was like, do that. so stupid at your age like i would do the most stupid things and everybody would know everything about me yeah and i would never i would never have been able to ha- like have the responsibility you do in terms of it's a lot your job it is a lot yeah 
But being an influencer while you're in school is like, it's a unique experience, isn't it? Yeah. Because, very. Um, I guess what was, we always talk about negatives and stuff, but I want it to be like really positive in a sense of what was, what is the positive of like having that both sides of your life? I feel like for me, it was definitely a positive because like I made so many like connections with brands and people and without it, I wouldn't have made some of my like best friends. So I feel like it was always good, but the like negative side of growing up in school, like people yeah. are horrible and growing up anyways, as a teenage girl is hard being in that kind of environment where girls literally look at you and be like, why is she wearing that? Like non school uniform day was always a dread. Cause you'd be like, what are they going to say about my outfit? Things like that. And I feel like girls always used to be, but boys were just as bad. Like, I feel like we okay. always think, oh, girls are so horrible. Girls are this, that. They are. They're horrible too. But like the boys were just as bad as the girls. Like the accounts they make about me, the group chats, like they just make pictures of me, like edit things. And I just be like, you're actual boys. Like, what are you doing? I remember once in, this is so like pathetic, but I remember in dodgeball, um, they had teachers used to put you at the back. So there'd be like four groups. Yeah. So the group that was standing on the benches and then the people behind would just be waiting to have their go. Some girls ran into like the, I think it was like the PE closet and it had like rugby balls and netballs and they was chucking them full pelt on my back of my head to the point like I just fell to the ground. I was like, I can't see anything because it was like full pelt. And at first I was just like, maybe it was like a mistake. But yeah. then I kept fit. I was like, they're not joking anymore. So things like that, you just think like, what? So how like, do you cope with that negativity then? Because if you're online, it, will, it won't, doesn't just happen in school. It comes home with you as well. Yeah, I feel like for me, I... Since I've left school, like I don't have contact with anyone. Like I just kind of left it there and was like, do you know what? I've got no good experiences with anyone other than like three people. But I feel like for me coming home, I told my parents everything. Like I was very open. And I feel like that's one thing that I always tell people. Like if I didn't have my family to get me through it, like God knows what would have happened. But I feel like also I used to tell the school everything and people would be like, she's such a snake. And I'd be like, no, I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to have to come home like this every day. So I feel like definitely having my family to like help me go into the school because teachers just belittle us. Like they just think like, um, it's just a little hissy fit. You know what I mean? They'll get yeah. over it. But like when parents go in, I feel like schools do more about it. So I had them come in and then, I don't know, just like when I went home, I feel like social media was like a complete opposite world. So when I went on there, I could just be myself and I didn't think about the school people, which is probably really weird because you think it would like carry on at home, which it did, but I'd completely block it out and just go film content. And it would be like a parents, distraction. If your parents also like intervening on your public socials, you probably didn't experience as much of it at home as like somebody who didn't have that. Yeah. Would. And I, that breaks my heart because I know what it's like for people that don't have the parents like that help as much as I like mine did. And I remember at one point there was like a massive room and it was like, um, Emily's mum and dad paid the school to protect her. I was like, <laughs> what is going on? Like genuinely, this was a rumor for like a year. And everyone was like, yeah, her mum and dad literally pay that teacher. Like that teacher just defends her. And I was like, no, I but can't you see? It. I'd have been like, yeah, they do. <laughs> but can't you see? Like I'm literally just getting defended because I'm in the right and you're in the wrong. Like, oh, it was awful. But I definitely think like with growing up on social media, there is negatives, but I thought it would all be like negatives from online. I never thought people that actually knew me would be the problem, which I feel like a lot of people think like, oh, she definitely gets a lot of hate online, which everyone experiences a fair share. If you're putting yourself out there, you're asking, well, you're not asking, but people are going to give their opinion, which is horrible. It shouldn't be the case, but people do. People are so opinionated. But I feel like definitely with certain influences in particular like they come home and get the hate more than I was at school and would come home and just distract myself like getting the nice comments was so much better than being at school and that's why I feel like when I got the opportunity to leave and do this full-time I was like I'm never going back because one of the things I learned um actually when I was researching episode I didn't know that if you earn above a certain threshold you didn't have to continue people to get so education. confused <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing and no. actually blew my mind do you think had you had a more positive experience at school you would have carried on into education anyway I've never been academic okay like at all like I literally scraped a four and a five in my GCSEs I for forget the it. it's, things. it's numbers now yeah like basically like a, <laughs> like a C okay um but no I literally scraped a pass basically so I was never academic sports I was really like really sport I've always been very sporty growing up so I feel like like 
in my sports so like A stars and things. So I was like, okay in that. Would I have went to college and done that? Probably not. I used to do dancing. So I feel like if I wasn't to have done social media, I probably would have went down, you know, going to dance college, doing all that. I definitely would not have gone into actual education ever. Like this is from the age of like six of me knowing, growing up being like, I'm going to dance. Like I was never an education person. I was more like, like academic was never me. Is doing things practical things just make more sense to me like even if I was to have gone to like I looked at college it was only until June I made my decision to not go it was like a back and forth I used to say to my teachers like do you think I should do it and they was all like yeah and then some of them would be like do you know what no like you're not academic like you don't you don't want to do this why waste two more years of your life I think the teachers have said no are probably the real ones because yeah. I feel like the ones that say yeah they they're kind just of like, have to okay yeah you got to stay in education but some of them didn't even know about this law so they're like well actually you can't do that and I'd be like well actually I can yeah I had like, to look it up because I was like what yeah but there is actually like a certain amount of money which I'm so grateful that I can even do because when I started this I didn't do it for the money at all like and even when before I got on social media like I didn't even think money was involved I just you thought just it was a already rich headband. I just thought <laughs> I literally wanted a Nickelodeon flower headband that would have made my week or year probably but I didn't even like understand like when people say like are you monetizing on YouTube I'd be like what does monetize mean <laughs> I'd like to like, be like oh my god you can make money after 10k I was like what is this but I feel like it's definitely something that I've obviously grown up now knowing how much like it can be a career but I still don't take it as a job I just take it as a hobby do you find it really bizarre that now that you can monetize it as much as you have to the point where you don't even need to go to school yeah it's just weird because like I'm talking to all my friends and they're like yeah I'm gonna go uni I'm doing this I'm doing that and then I'm just like I've started work like I've literally got my whole job now so it's just weird but I wouldn't want it any other way like what I do is what I love and I feel like if you can get money from it it's just a bonus but I would never see it as like I'm only going to do this brand deal because of the money every brand deal I do has to be authentic and organic and I feel like the more it's like something I'd use myself the more I would rather do it and if there's money it's just a bonus I saw that you opened your GCSE results in a YouTube video. Yeah. That's quite a brave thing to do because yeah. regardless of what you get, it's like a very big moment in your life. So to put that on the internet, I wouldn't have wanted to put it on the internet. I mean, I literally woke up 8 a.m., went to get my results at nine, posted the video by 12 that day. Like it was like hardcore. But I think regardless if I passed maths or failed maths, I would have posted it because I just think like the more real you are with people, the more they respect it. And I feel like why hide it when everyone has to go through it? Every year 11 has to do their GCCs. It's like a thing. And I feel like, do you know what's really funny? Because like my friends from Spain, they don't have to do that. So they're like, is it GCSE? I'm like, that's like the biggest thing in like UK. Yeah. You're in school your whole life and that builds up to that exam. But I said to everyone, I was like, no matter what I get, I'm going to show them because it's real. And if my emotions was, I was going to start break down crying, let them see it. Do you know what I mean? But definitely some people will probably be like, never, I wouldn't have done that. And all my friends, I was like, are you filming yours just for yourself? Because I always film everything yeah. to keep it as a memory. And they was like, no, they was like, we're just going to live it in the moment. I was like, fair enough. But I want to keep that memory forever because I just think it's cool. Um, so when I done it, yeah, I was with my best friend. I didn't let my sister come with me. I didn't let my mum and dad. Well, they was in Spain anyway. So they was like, you don't need us to come home. I was like, no, you can stay out there for another few days. So they were actually driving home from Spain the day I got my results. But yeah, I remember my sister was like, can I come? I was like, no way. I'm going with my friend. I'm making it as like unserious, but serious at the same time. Because I didn't want it to be like pressurizing. And having like someone from my family, I don't know. It would have scared me more because I've been like, you're on my shoulder. And my sister did so well in like uni, GCC. I was like, I did not need her in my ear hell. So, but she was so like supportive. Was it a good, even with your video, regardless of what your results were, did you get a good reaction from sharing it? So I personally got actually, I passed what I needed to pass. I yeah. failed everything that I didn't, maybe I should have cared, but I didn't really <laughs> care about. I've not um, used my maths GCSE since I actually took the exam, so I wouldn't worry too much no, about it. No, literally. But I feel like for me, I had an okay like impact result, whatever. But I saw some influencers really getting hate for it. And I thought, Do you know what? You're so brave for putting that out there. And like for people to just hate on you, I just thought like... No, it shows more about them than you. Not everyone's academic. You can be really, really clever in other ways than just you doing like, I don't know, fractions on a piece of paper. <laughs> but good for the people that are. But like, you don't need to hate on people for not. But I was personally all right, to be honest. Everyone was pretty nice to me. I think it is one of those situations in your job, especially when you're growing up, that 
regardless of what you do, someone's always going to hate on it. Because if you did really well, you'd be showing off. Yeah. Yeah, if literally. If you did really badly, you're a bad People want to see my day in the life. But if I show something like me, I don't know, going out for a beach, and they're like, this is just not realistic. I'm like, but everything else was. You're just looking at the one thing that maybe not every teenage girl does. But I don't know. I try and make as like real as possible because I know that it's like better to be like that. And also I find it just like entertaining watching my videos back being like, oh, I remember that day. And it's all real. Like if I yeah. was doing it all stage and set up, I just don't know. I wouldn't enjoy what I'm doing. Well, you want to watch that video back in 10 years? I actually do watch all my videos back. Like I rewatched like do four you? YouTube videos yesterday of me when I was 12 and I was like, oh. I think that would make me cringe so it much. It does make me cringe. Like you watching Back Love Island must have made you like want to throw up. But I think even watching it the week, it, like the week I left, even watching the episode where I left. I, I could not imagine up. being on TV. Like I, I would not watch it, I don't think. But I feel like YouTube's different. No, I think because, YouTube's worse because no. everybody in the world sees it. No, more people see TV. No but one not, really sees my video. Like my old videos didn't do very well either. They, they didn't do anywhere near as well as now. So it's like, give it right, time. They're going to come back. They are going to haunt me when I'm older. <laughs> like at least like some of them I've deleted because I was like, I cannot have that on YouTube. Like me like playing with slime at the age of like nine. How to ride a penny board. Do you remember them like little skateboards? What's a penny board? It's like a skateboard, but like a, like a, I don't know. I'm really showing my age now, aren't I? <laughs> well, my sister used to have it. So I took hers. I thought you'd know that. That's no, like, I wasn't. Not my I gen. was really, I was a big recluse as a child. So <laughs> I didn't really do anything. Okay. Right. My <laughs> sister used to just go on a penny board and the little flickers. Do you remember them? The scooters with like two. And you'd like. Uh, no, see, your sister's less injury prone than me. So oh she God. got to do all the fun stuff, whereas I literally would have hurt myself. <laughs> no, yeah. We had that in Spain. Every summer we go to Spain and we go on our flickers and then like roller skates and stuff. No, I know. I would actually fun hurt childhood. myself. If social media deleted itself tomorrow or it disappeared. Don't say that. It wouldn't. <laughs> but like you would, well, you've had offers of from other brands to go and work with them, haven't oh, you? Oh yeah, like when I'm on shoots and stuff, they're like, if you ever need anything, like I'm like, yeah, maybe in the future. Yeah, so if it, if social media disappeared- We'd all have some have, sort of thing to go on to. Well, that's why I think that you shouldn't do influencing as a degree or put all of your eggs into one basket because it can disappear. And it's my, it's my job, but I just think- like whatever happens, happens. Go to uni, do business, learn about it in a different kind of way. And then who knows what will happen if you just do it as a side hustle at the beginning. Also, my favorite TikToks are people that have corporate jobs and do it a day in a life because I love watching people actually I do. I do like watching people, the nine to fives. Yeah, like yeah. come to me with my nine to five. I'm like, wow, what does she do in the I day? I love watching the finance bros TikToks. They're yes. really bizarre. Property TikToks are good. Are I like good. to see the houses that oh I can't God. afford. Do you know when they go like, hey how much is your house and then they're like can we go look around and then they have like a little tour have you seen want, them yeah but i wouldn't yeah. want to show anyone my house oh uh, if someone asked me to come in my room i'm prepared just shoes seriously you don't know what you're gonna see on everywhere. the floor i literally just like throw everything there's makeup splodge everywhere fake tan everywhere on my carpet i need to get my carpet redone i'm just saying i'm talking this, <laughs> this is why existence. i don't let my parents into my house <laughs> no <laughs> my mum literally comes to my room and turns straight back around she's like i'm not looking that's it's disgusting fair right. enough but Sorry. it's all part of being a teenager isn't it literally but then being a teenager in the public eye is different because you have to you feel pressure to come across perfect all of the time yeah it's definitely a big expectation from people how do you feel like growing up in the public eye has like impacted your friendships because i can imagine it's really intense like there might be people that just want to hang around with you because you get free stuff or like you go to all these nice events or they're fans of people that you're associated with I feel like it's really hard and that's something that like no one talks about enough is how like stressful it is because I've got so many like good groups of friends from before I did this and you'll notice I'm still friends with all of them now and it's more now making new friends I'm like who do I trust who do I not because for example I was in a friendship group for a while like a year and a half ago and it just become like they were saying things like tag me it's like Mm. why do you want to be tagged like so obsessed with i wouldn't want to like ever do that to my if my friend did social media i would be so supportive but i wouldn't get involved i just leave it to them they're the pros not me do you know what i mean but when they said things like tag me or they'd be like oh oh that looks so cool can i come next time and i'd just be like i wouldn't ask you to come to your job with you like <laughs> it gets to the point where i was just a bit like this is weird and i kind of clocked on a lot of people were telling me like 
they're literally going to school just bragging about the things because I'm so like generous with my stuff yeah. if I get gifted stuff and I'm opening it in front of my friends number one I feel bad anyways because I'm like I feel like I'm bragging yeah. even though I'm not I'm literally just opening my parcel but like doing it in front of people and they're like when did you get that I'm like oh I don't know they've just sent it to me like I just feel like I don't want to come across as like oh I got this and this for free and then when they do that but then it just gets even more awkward when they're like, can I have some? And if I offer you, I really don't care. Like that's me offering. But it's when they take it and then I just be like, do you know what? Like, are they just using me for this stuff? And I have learned and I've had to deal with quite a few different scenarios. But I feel like even talking to boys, it's so hard. Like yeah. I've stuck to the same boy since I was like 11 because I just know he wouldn't use me for my following. Now I'm like, who are all these people? Like they're all just, I don't know. Like I'll meet a boy and they'll be like, oh yeah, you're good on TikTok, aren't you? And I'm like, no, no, I don't want to be with you anymore. I'm like, I can't talk to boys that like know me. It doesn't get any easier no. when it comes to boys. Just thought no. I'd throw that out there for you. Please, <laughs> don't, warning. don't tell me this now. It doesn't get any better. But, but I just feel like because it's such like a shock to the system, no one understands. Even at my age, like people think our age and our generation know everything, but like we're still confused on these influencer things. I'm doing yeah. it and like, what is going on? It's just weird to me because I followed so many people that have done this and like been a fan girl, like proper hardcore with my friends, watch YouTube videos of like Saffron Barker, people like that. And now I'm like at an event with her, like, oh my God. But to be honest, I'm going to admit this now. Like when I'm with certain, like me and my best friend Ellie love Love Island. So when it was okay. on this season and Jess was at an event, I was like, I sneakily took like a little pic and was like, Ellie, look oh, who it is. she's one of them. <laughs> I was like, look who it is. I was so like, oh my God. Like I love Jess, but she's actually really nice as well. So I'm happy that she was nice because I was like, please tell me she's going to be nice. But she came up to me and was like, hi, I'm Jess. I was like, I know. <laughs> I was like, I love you. <laughs> but yeah, it's just weird. Like being surrounded by people that I literally looked up to. I mean, like the Love Island as they come from like this year but I mean before like Saffron all of that kind of era that was like my growing up when it comes to friends though like um when you get older people don't care as much like my friends actually don't care they like but I'd like friends like that I would like a friend to be like oh well done that's really cool yeah. but it's like when they just get too involved I'm like are you just trying to like do what I'm doing or what I just think it's so hard and my mum and dad will be like don't like the look of her don't trust her and i'm like always listen to your parents yeah they're always right at the yeah, end even if i think like no they'd never it's they're always the first ones to be right and my mom would go told you so and i'm like yeah I've, for God's I've, sake. if i had a pound for every time my parents told me that yeah and I've, they're always right like it's yeah. actually annoying because i just try like push it off and be like no so it's you learn to do social media basically off your sister so yeah. both your sister and your mum has so I've got two sisters who both do it. Does your mum do social media as well? No. Slightly. She wants to. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm joking. She has like 15,000 followers. That's still a lot. And yeah, girly just likes coming along with me. She just comes <laughs> along with me and she's like, oh, I like this. This is anti-aging. You don't need this yet. I'll take that. And I'm like, okay. So how does, how does that work in, your ter in terms of like family dynamic if you're all kind of like on social media? everyone's supportive of each other my sisters still work they don't just do this full time okay so they're still at work so like literally it's like my mom has to do three runs to the station a day to drop like one sister in early one sister in midday and then me like late at night to go to events and things so it works well we all really really enjoy what we're doing and like my parents are so supportive like they'd never be the kind of parents to be like don't do what you want to do follow this kind of thing like they've always just let us do what we want to do and support us obviously they'd be there to be like actually don't do that but yeah. like they're, they're strict but they're not strict like offering constructive criticism yeah definitely um selena gomez says that um having a big social media following comes with like a lot of pressure and it's very intense because you always have to double you always have to question yourself and double think before you post something do you feel the same way about having your, your audience because obviously you're young but also your audience is going to be really young as well they're very young and I always want to like show them that you can do anything and and then the comments and the messages like thank you for showing it's okay to not be okay because I feel like on social media everyone's so oh life's perfect everything's amazing which it is amazing that we, we get to do but no one shows that like we're all real and human and I feel like just to be able to help younger girls in knowing like you can have problems you can go through bad days um but I feel like just being able to help people in that kind of sense is like the main thing for me it's just because like when I was growing up I always looked at people like Saffron and was like oh I really want to do what she does but like 
even Saffron, like she shows so much of like her down days and things like that. And I love that. And when she shows like her acne, I'm like, do you know what? We all have it. Why, why is everyone not appreciating it enough? And that's why I really appreciate like the influencers that show the real them over all the other ones. How do you get yourself to a state where you're emotion, you're mentally and emotionally mature enough to do to like think about what you're posting, especially at I such think, a young age? I think with my age, like, I feel so much older. Like I'm just so much more yeah, mature. I didn't realise how old you were until someone told me. Yeah, but I feel like with my age, everyone that I talk to is like, your age, like my manager's age. And then my sisters are literally the same age as you guys. So when I'm talking to you guys, I'm just like, I feel like I'm older than I am. Yeah. But not in the way that like I want to be older, but I just am more mature. Having older sisters really, really made me mature anyway. I feel like growing up doing social media, you have to be head and like everything switched on. You can't have one of them days where you're like, actually I'm going to be messing around as a teenager. Like you have to be like everything's got to be perfect which is obviously hard and it comes with a lot of like stress and ag and when I'm out with my friends like I have to be on my best behavior and sometimes they're like just live loose a little and I'm like no like people could be filming or people take pictures and stuff like that which is amazing but I feel like I would never change what I do for the world but again it does come with a lot of pressure and people yeah. don't really realize that and they just think like oh you know everyone has pressure growing up anyways but it's like added on so you did your uh, your first big collaboration with pretty little thing before you're 16 i was 15 when yeah. i started doing so that's stuff. a big thing to have to deal with at 15 i think it was amazing they are literally like the best team for helping with like if you're anxious like they're all the girls that work for them are so nice and i get on with them all so well but also like doing that it's nerve-wracking having your own event like yeah. i was like what do I do? Like, do I go up to people? And, but I feel like things like that, no normal 16 year olds thrown into a situation where no. they've got to like have their own event and host it. So it was always really like nerve wracking. But I think out of all the teams I could have done the first thing with, that was like the perfect brand for me. And I feel like it's so authentic and organic. It just was perfect. They also sponsored your 16th birthday. Yeah. So this was the event. It was my 16th birthday Oh, wow. Birthday so you did it in collaboration event. together. Yeah. So it was for my sweet 16th launch and it was the birthday week. So it was really cool. But you also have done like um, other really cool collaborations. You collaborated with Tony and Guy. Yeah. For London Fashion Week. That was amazing. Interviewing models backstage. Yeah. I got to look around and see what... It, I've never seen that in my life. So I was like, what the hell? They look so good. Like everyone's so model looking. I didn't realise... And models were so like perfect. They the, are so perfect. That's a lot of responsibility to do at the age of 16, like to have to interview other people. Yeah, it's scary, but I actually love doing it. So I just think it's like, yeah, just cool and fun. What was your favorite like memory or experience from London Fashion Week when you were doing that? Um, definitely when I was backstage with Tony and Guy, the second show we done, I think it was called Paul Castello. Um, yeah, it was really, really good fun. And I don't know, it was just really fun. I got to meet a lot of the people that do hair I don't know what they call like apprenticeship like they're young like my oh, yeah. age that yeah. do hair but I didn't realize how much I include like the younger generation to doing like these big models hair so it was really nice to meet them because I was like you're literally my age and you're getting to do fashion week as a hairdresser like that's amazing um but I actually made like a really good friend out of that so I still text them on Instagram now but yeah it was just really nice to like see all of the backstage because I feel like we don't see that you just sit in the you know in the season you just do this like yeah the it's glitz so and glamour different. backstage is not the same as no, it is it's on not, stage but it was really cool to see what it's actually like because i always watch like victoria's secret you know like the bts videos of their catwalks but i didn't realize how cool it actually is so when you now think about your career what is like your big goal like if cherish phoned you tomorrow and said you've got this and it was your dream deal what would it be Oh my God. Um, Teen Vogue. Like Teen I want to be in Teen Vogue so bad. And I want to do that teaching. And it's like, I was the cover of Vogue. <laughs> I want to do that. I so want to do that. But no, I feel like going on television, doing more presenting, definitely. I love like talking to people, especially like, I feel like interviewing and stuff is just really like cool. And I've still got my podcast coming out soon. So being able to interview like some really, really cool guests on there that like, I either look up to or I just like aspire to be like, I just feel like it's really nice when you get to meet people that you've seen online. So just keep going to events and also like, I don't know, there's so much in the pipeline. I can't really say, but like there's so much coming up that's like dream come true. I don't know why I ask 
influencers or people in the public eye like what they come what they've got coming up because no There's one can no ever point. say there is no point so i just waste my own oxygen i like, get so asking. scared even this morning i was like am i allowed to say i'm going on her podcast or do i keep it quiet <laughs> i was like get ready with oh, me no. for a podcast you can, everyone just saying come on my podcast it d- does great publicity for me yeah. so i'm never gonna shoot it down um what would you say is like what would be your biggest piece of advice to any young person that's considering doing like following your footsteps I feel like anyone can do it and no matter what age I feel like because of my age people do belittle it and be like she's only 16 but anyone can do anything at any age so I feel like just carrying on following your dreams if you've got something you want to go for do it no matter what people are saying because I feel like at school it was so like horrible yeah I got through it anyone can get through it like if you want to do something don't let anyone stop you do it especially like if your parents let you do it obviously do it like don't you saying that your parents are going to be like what but I feel like there's just so much that you can do and the fact that people actually don't want to do what they want to do because of people's opinions it like breaks my heart because I just think it's so nice to be able to do what I want to do I think it's also really important to say like to be to tell your parents because obviously with the things you were going through at school you've got to open up you have to be open and I think that a lot of young people are too scared to talk to adults about what they're experiencing on social media definitely I feel like people just think it's like embarrassing like even like at school I used to be like oh my god do I tell my mum what they said or is like even the rumors I'd be like should I really be telling my mum these rumors and then I thought do you know what if I don't I'm keeping it into myself and it's always just good to tell someone even if that's a teacher parent a sibling anyone your nan your granddad like someone is better than no one so yeah especially because if you're having something if you're experiencing something really bad then if they know and something happens to you then they know what's what happened. happened yeah and they kind of are all just behind it anyways then and they can support you in a better way so i always ask all my guests the same final question I know, but this is going to be because i watch your podcast okay <laughs> do, do you want girl. me to tell you what the question yeah, go is on, you can ask okay. the question anyways. <laughs> I, was just, I thought you were going to tell me the question then <laughs> no, it's fine, you um, can do it. if you could offer a piece of advice to your younger self what would it be based on your life and career journey so far For me, I feel like the best advice I'd say is like, take your time with things. I feel like I had so much pressure of like, wouldn't do everything at once, but just taking your time, doing things when you want to do them and also just be wary of people. I feel like at the beginning, I was so oblivious and just thought everyone wanted to be my friend, but everyone's in it for a reason. So it just depends if their reason's true or, you know, for like other reasons. But yeah, I just say, I don't know, keeping myself aware, but also like, I just wish my little self had someone to look up to as much as I want people to look up to me in a way yeah. as well. So yeah, that's it. That's oh. the final question. That's a really good answer. I know it's massive culture shock to see you, how you behave at 16 versus how I behaved at 16. Honestly, the amount of people that told me this and they're like, I had a fringe and all this. I'm like, do you know what? Every 16 year old is different. I'm pretty sure I was still wearing blue eyeshadow at 16. Oh so my God. I'm so glad that TikTok didn't exist back then. <laughs> Can you imagine? No, I don't. I'm so glad it doesn't. But thank you. I can't wait to see your podcast and eventually see you on Teen Vogue. You'll have to come on and we can talk all things you next time. Oh God. <laughs> thank you for letting me come on as well. It's amazing. Big fan. <laughs>